Jesse Granger with The Athletic. Big switch with the uh, top two lines. What were you going for, and what did you like, and why do you think they played so well? Uh, um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and uh, we just wanted to change it up a little bit, and fortunately for us, it worked a little bit. I, I liked our game. I'm, we fell asleep for a minute and a half late in the first period, and it cost us two goals, and you know we're disappointed with that, but I thought overall we played a real good, solid game, and lots of scoring opportunities, and the second period was real good for us. Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Uh, Paul Stastny said after the game that there's only you know a handful of real 200-foot guys, guys that are on the power play, playing in all positions, penalty kill. What is it like to have guys like him and Riley Smith and William Carlson and guys that kind of do a little bit of well, everything? Well, the more of those guys you got, the better your team's going to be. I mean, when they, they play a game that's, uh, like you said, 200-foot players, and uh, you can put them on the ice in any situation, the more players you got like that, the better your team is going to be, and that's what we have to be. Everybody has to be responsible both ways, and uh, it makes you a better team. You get more wins for sure. Coach Matt Gutierrez, Sports Adrenaline. Um, you talk a lot about jump with your team, and as well as they played in the first period or so, looked like they really found that after the power play and, and the goal from Peary in the second period. Talk about this, the switch there for you guys. Yeah, that was huge. Peary scoring that power play goal was real big because we're down 2 nothing, and uh, right after that we had four or five real good chances again, and we didn't get well, the one that got disallowed was the right call obviously with the offside, but uh, we still had good jump, and uh, it carried over into the third period, and it was really real big for us. But uh, And again, I like the way we came out tonight and started the game too. The, the carrier line came out there the first shift and hit some good four checking and good bumps and you know it was a good start to the game for us also. Who can then Allen? Ken Bolke, Sinbin, Dot Vegas. Obviously, you have some time to make the decision, but do you think you saw enough out of the new top six to leave it that way? Yeah, I'll, I don't know. We'll see. But it's possible. It definitely looked good enough, and uh, you know, we'll look at it tomorrow and, and talk about it and, and the practice, and we'll see. I'm not sure. But I liked it. <laughs> Uh, Alan Snell, LVSportsBiz.com. Can you talk a little about Bells? He just seems to be kind of that unsung kind of guy who just makes the plays, does all the dirty work, set up the, you know. The, the that hasn't changed from the day we got him. You know, he's a block shots, he does all the dirty work, and, uh, you know, he he runs that uh, so-called fourth line, and he puts the pucks in the right places so they can get the four check going, and he's a big part of our group, for sure. Wheel does a good job. Coach John Castanino, UNLV. Can you talk about uh, Brandon Peary in the context of must be pretty nice to have the luxury of a, calling up a guy and for him to be able to put a, nu a puck in the net? Later. Yeah, that's what Brandon does. He's, uh, you know, he, he's. I think he was a leading scorer in the American League when we called him up, and he's a goal scorer and he, he does real good things out there. And I, I'm familiar with the player. I had him in Florida. I had him a little bit last year for two or three games last year. And again, he played a real good hard game tonight, and that's what we like about him. And uh, I'm happy for him getting the opportunity, and he comes in there and scores a huge goal. First. Chris Chapman, Fox Sports Radio, over here, Coach. Yeah. Matthew Barzal, he, Flurry referred to him as almost like a figure skater on the ice. So how hard is it to get your team to play a guy like that who does so many things well and can skate circles around a lot of guys? Yeah, no, he's an unbelievable skater, and it's really tough to, you know, the old days you put a hook on him, you hold on to him, but you can't do that anymore because of the penalties. And uh, I think once tonight he was skating, he had the puck for about 15 or 20 seconds, and Derek Eglin did an outstanding job against him and then to try and keep him on the outside of the ice. And But that's what the kid does. He's a, he's a great young player. He's got great movement. And... Uh, He's, I guess he, you know, you could say the way he, the way he skates, he's like a figure skater. He opens it up, and you can't take the puck from him. And like I said, you don't want to put too many guys out on him at once. If two or three guys go to him and try and get the puck off, him, he's going to make a great pass, and somebody's going to be open. So I think as you know, as, as we did a good a job as possible against him tonight, and he's a real key guy for their team. Jesse Granger with the Athletic. Um, Alex Tuck mentioned that playing on the power play with William and Marshy kind of helped him have that immediate chemistry. Is that something you saw on the power play that made you think maybe putting him on that line would work? Not at all. Not at all. No. No, I mean, he played a lot of power play time with those guys a lot of time, but uh, I just, you know, it was a gut feeling and I wanted to change things up a little bit. And uh, like I said, fortunately for us, it worked. Ryan Quigley, SB Nation. Um, 47 shots on goal tonight, 17 shots on goal last week against this team. What goes into such a drastic change in just a week's time? In that? I don't know. I mean, last week it was a different game altogether, you know what I mean? And it's two teams come out tonight, and 
I just thought tonight's biggest thing for me was our forecheck was real good early, and uh, we put pressure on them all night long, and I thought Grace had an outstanding game for them. He made some real key saves and big saves, and then they get up 2 nothing, and it's it's one of those things, here you go, like what's going, you know, we're playing well, but we're down 2 nothing. so. But uh, we found a way to come back and battle back and earn a big two points. Do two more, Gary, and then Chris. Now you forced them to defend Turk for long stretches. Would you like, is this kind of the blueprint that you'd like to see from your team really often? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when we, like I said, uh, for me, and when I look at my team, when we're playing good, it starts with our forecheck. And the first shift of the game started their forecheck, and I think it just carried over for the whole game. And guys are working hard. They play it hard together. And, uh, you know, we were disappointed being down 2 nothing after the first period, giving up two late goals in the first period. It's, it's not the, it's, you know, it wasn't the, the perfect ending of the period that I thought we played well in. And then, fortunately for us, our guys battled back, and they had showed a lot of character, and uh, they played real well in the second or third period. And we got the, go the game within one on Perry's big goal. So I really liked a lot of our game tonight. Both Brandon and, and Paul talked about, they, they both scored their first goal in this building as members of this team. Brandon and Alex both talked about the crowd tonight. Can you just speak a little bit about how, how much that carries your team, especially in a tight game like this? Well, we were down 2 nothing, and it wasn't, it wasn't a great feeling on our bench. And then uh, when Pierre scored that first goal, you, you heard the noise, you heard the crowd get behind us, and it just carried over. I mean, that's what our crowd does for us. When we score a goal, no matter what the score is, they, they give us a boost, and uh, they definitely did it again tonight.